Hi there, this is Darcy Frankel. I'm coming to you from the Hanalei Day Spa and the Ayurveda Center here on Kauai. I'm a longtime Ayurveda practitioner. I'm also the creator of the Serious Cleanse product, protocol, and online course. I'm so happy that you're here with me today because I'm going to be sharing about the 10 keys to being seriously healthy. Then you'll take this knowledge and turn it into wisdom by making some life-altering changes. So exciting. <laughs> so get a pen and paper because you may want to take some notes as well as rating yourself on a scale from 0 to 10. The seventh key is all about how you protect your brain. There are lots of ways and the first main way that comes to mind is EMFs. Do you know that we're exposed to a hundred million times more electromagnetic frequency than our grandparents were exposed to? Now that electromagnetic frequency interferes with our physical body functions, can it interferes with our brain function, can even affect our DNA at the mitochondrial level, which we then pass down to our children and then pass down to their children, which exponentially decreases our mitochondrial effectiveness. We really, really want to protect this. So electromagnetic frequencies from cell phones, computers, appliances, wireless internet, and so many more. Even these phones, wireless phones, have um, EMF interference, the modem. Now, EMF health risks range from sleeplessness to headaches all the way ex to extreme cancer. I'm sure you've heard of many people who have had brain cancer, and they link this to cell phone usage. In 2003, Swedish doctors concluded that radiation from cellular phones are known to cause cancer and children tend to absorb 50% more radiation directly to their brain because their skulls are actually thinner. Don't let your children use devices. Electromagnetic devices affects our brain. How do you protect your brain from this? In my course, I help people go through their homes step by step, detoxing their environments. I give action steps to help shield yourself and prevent harmful EMF rays. Right here in my office, I was just taking a look. I have four things that I can see to protect my own brain and body from EMFs. I have this Claris pendant, which has copper wiring and blocks the EMFs. I also have EMF, EMF shielding garments. Uh, this shirt has silver fibers woven into it and when worn it prevents the EMFs from entering into my body. A cloth here, this is made from, there's silver material in here and you can create a Faraday cage with this preventing and shielding those EMFs from coming in. I also have some other technology do you know that our overuse of devices prevent us from being in tune with our own rhythms and the Earth's natural rhythms, as well as the natural rise and fall of our own serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin levels? The average person looks at their Instagram over a hundred times a day. It's important to know that when we constantly look at social media, we are flooding our bodies with dopamine, which actually creates addiction. Are you able to take social media breaks? Are you able to take breaks from your smartphone? How well is your home and your sleeping space protected from EMF devices? Number eight, stress management. Do you know that meditation actually enhances neurological and cognitive function? Not just pie in the sky, enlightenment. I'm talking about do how do we affect our own state of mind and consciousness and immunity? How do we manage our sense of equipoise so it doesn't interfere with our deeper levels of immunity, our strength, and our ability to function and be productive in the world? Are you able to manage your own stress levels? Do you want enhanced brain function, coherence, and memory? In 1993, there was this amazing study done in Washington, D.C. What happened was an organization brought together 
a group of people to create coherence in the town. Now, it was a group of people dedicated to meditate. It was hypothesized that the level of violent crime in the District of Columbia would drop significantly with this large group of people meditating. From June 7th to July 30th of 1993, they calculated 1% of the population, that was 4,000 people meditating, came to DC. Even the FBI did analysis and they showed that the HRA crimes, which is homicide, rape, and assault, serious crimes, they dropped significantly by 23.3% during the actual project. There were even calculations that a steady increase of coherence over time would produce a 49%, almost 50% of crime reduction in a city over time. That's amazing. And these people who were committing the crimes weren't even meditating. What do you think meditation could do for you? During that study, they even tracked the president, at the time President Clinton, and his likability rates and other statistics went up during that time. Overall, how do you manage your stress levels? How many of you didn't even realize you were stressed until you came to visit my spa on Kauai? or took a vacation, or had a massage, a beachside massage with us. You didn't even realize how stressed you were until you dropped down and reduced your stress, did some stress management. Overall, how do you manage your stress levels? What do you do when you're upset? Do you dwell? Do you brood? Do you explode or implode? Can you see how everything going on in this day and age and how we need to be guardians of our own health and well-being? Rate yourself. How are you at managing your own stress levels? I'm really passionate about helping people to manage their stress levels. In my YouTube channel, on my blog, on my online course, I have many tools and techniques to help people learn, or even if you're experienced, to help you hone and fine-tune your practices so that you can live with a deeper level of enlightenment and equipoise. Oh my gosh, we're at the ninth key now. This is so great. Now we talked a lot about impressions and information, energy, substances coming in. Now we're going to talk about what goes out. Elimination, sweat, urination, defecation, as well as breath. Are you sweating at least four times a week? Sweating boosts endorphins, it eliminates toxins, bacteria, as well as heavy metals. It's not really healthy to go two or three days or more without a bowel movement, unless you're one of the rare types who have a mega colon. How are your bowel movements? Now, I added breath to this because it's something that goes out. In order to be really healthy, we want our breath, our exhalation, to be even a little more than our inhalation. Have you ever noticed that you might hold your breath one point or another? So on a scale from zero to 10, how would you relate yourself on elimination? Go ahead, be rigorously honest with yourself. Last but certainly not least is key number 10. It's the quality of our relationships. Notice I did not say quantity. Nowadays, we're so focused on the quantity of relationships. How many Facebook friends or Instagram followers do we have? We really are focusing on the quality, not the quantity. I remember one time I went out on a date and we went to this restaurant and you know me, I'm all about like, is it organic? What's the quality of the food? Is it free range? What kind of oils are you using? Is it, you know, is it canola oil, which I want to avoid? Is it good quality oil? I'm all about quality. He, he looks at the menu and, he, and then he looks at the waiter and he says, you know what? Which of these dishes, he didn't even care which, which of these dishes has the most food? He's looking for quantity. Obviously, he was really, really hungry. So in the same way, we want to think about quality, quality of impressions that we take in. So how are the quality of your relationships like with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues? Are you able to sustain long-term friendships? What happens when, when someone accidentally steps on someone's toes? What skills do you use to clear the air? What skills do you use to advocate for your needs, for someone else's needs? Do you make clear requests or demands? 
having love in our lives increases our health and well-being. You know, studies show that people who are married and have quality relationships tend to live long. How would you rate yourself on this scale based on the criteria I've provided. Just to recap, those are the 10 keys to be seriously healthy. If you like this and you want more of what I got, you will love my Serious Cleanse course. Sign up for my newsletter, click subscribe on my YouTube channels, and friend me on Facebook too. Leave your comments. I really, really, really want to know how did you rate yourself. Be rigorously honest and tell me what things you're going to add and what things you're going to let go of. Thanks for listening, and as we say in my country, aloha.